Hi again, I'm Ken Moore from the Society of Epistonauts. Have you ever felt personally negged by the Star Citizen lore team? In the Galactic Guide to the Davian System from 2014, it explains that for reasons not completely understood by sociologists, Sestulis became a flashpoint for political upheaval. There's a joke to be made here about sending sociologists to do an anthropologist's job, but aside from that, we've gotten updates to Galactopedia since then that omit this kind of statement. But ever since reading it the first time, I've had this obsession with figuring out Davian System. At first glance, it might seem obvious why Sestulis could be a site for radical politics. If you look at any star map, you'll notice that Davian sits along the most direct corridor between Sol and Terra. This is even acknowledged in the later Lore Maker's Guide video on Davian. But looking at Davian's position, not just in space, but in time, actually heightens this. Look at the early evolution of human expansion, from Sol to Krosha, and then Redder, and onward from those two systems. We're told that when Davian was discovered, they had to rewrite textbooks because it had been taken for granted that there would be no more jump points connected to Sol. Then some more textbooks had to be thrown out when humanity first encountered the Banu in Davian's system. While it became clear later on that Banu space was actually fairly distant from Davian, at least initially, it provoked this flurry of settlement in Davian's system of people who were looking for opportunities to trade with our new stellar neighbors. As part of the settlement process, there was a need to terraform Davian too. A new outfit called Badco Geobuilders was the lowest bidder, and they did a shit job. <laughs> As a result, Sestolis has an uncomfortably thin atmosphere, but it was decided not to fix it. This is why the main landing zone Jada has been built under a massive biodome, to keep the city at a more comfortable pressure. While this makes for a striking postcard, it must also serve as a reminder to residents that their well-being was left to the care of the lowest bidder. Now, that all has to do with the early settlement of Davian, but I want to also draw your attention to the evolution of human space after 2430, what I like to call the Davian century. Look at the shaded areas of this star map. Each region is accessible by a single system. The Davian branch develops incredibly rapidly. Prior to Davian's discovery, there were 13 to 15 systems known to humanity. By the end of the following century, there are more than that downstream from Davian alone. By 2529, Davian sits at the exact midpoint of the UNE. Everything going from one half of human space to the other passes through Davian. Everything. That includes everything traveling between Earth and more than half of its settled worlds. We're told that Sestulis ascends to the Senate relatively quickly, and it becomes politically quite impactful. The legislation that would evolve into the UEE's common laws was originally proposed by Sestulis' senator close to the end of this period. This makes perfect sense to me. Whatever else is going on in Davian economically, it ends up the fulcrum of UNE trade. Sailors and dock workers have a well-documented history of militancy and radicalism, and the political class here has its own particular interests as well. The common laws coming from Sestulis suggests to me that the political and economic elites there understood themselves as stewards of the world, worlds along the Davian branch, or at least they had an enlightened self-interest in the stability of the nearby frontier. But only a little while after this apparently egalitarian push comes the siege of Jada, starting as a protest against the implementation of a common currency. Given Davian's position in stellar trade, I could have imagined that most would have preferred a common currency. In the end, I think the riots were really against centralization. Centralization and resistance being things that come up a lot in Star Citizen's lore, as much for world-building necessity as storytelling. If the, UNE, if the UEE is going to be Rome, it needs to become Rome. But besides that meta-narrative, we can wonder if a common currency might be viewed as eroding the sovereignty of both the worlds on the frontier and of Sestulis itself especially if the common laws were devised to prevent this exact kind of external domination. We can perhaps read the events of the siege this way too. While the UNE viewed the capture of Jada's atmosphere production facilities as a terrorist threat, what greater assertion of sovereignty against the system that left you, left you gasping for breath than to take control of your own air? Whatever the case, the radical reputation of Jada had to have contributed to both the possibility and believability of the false flag bombing that happened there 17 years later, which provided the justification for Ivor Messer's consolidation of power. Given its economic and political particulars, we might also imagine the Davian century as a precursor to the ascension of Terra. 
And though it was possible to bypass Debian after 2530, its positioning, history, economy, and infrastructure ensure that it remains relevant today. Thanks. Look, more, look forward to more videos from the Society of Epistonauts in the future, a mix of gameplay and discussion and criticism of Star Citizen's lore from a social science perspective.